Welcome to TechX Media live from Jitex Global 2025. I am joined by Darren Gale, Associate VP Europe Middle East and Africa at Fortra. Let's welcome Darren on TechX Media. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, it's great to have you here with us, Darren, today. Uh, so, Darren, my first question is from you. You are you have been in the cybersecurity industry for uh, around 25 years now. So in 25 years of being in the industry, what is the, what is the most surprising kind of cyber attack you have seen? And what lessons can companies learn from it? Yeah, uh, so it's a great question. Uh, it was my great pleasure actually at the event to present um, at the uh, UAE Cybersecurity Council, uh, uh, boot, uh, the, the presentation area, auditorium. And uh, the part of my presentation, I actually made reference to the uh, Lockheed Martin breach in 2011 and I think it was in, in if you look back over the course of cybersecurity that breach is significant in a number of different ways first of all it was from an APT group uh, Adva advanced persistent threat actor group and their level of sophistication to attack an organization that had two-factor authentication already fully implemented on their perimeter um, was incredible. And the strategy uh, is very famous in the industry. The strategy that the threat actor employed was to actually target their service provider, which in this case was RSA, the security company, with a weaponized Excel spreadsheet to gain access and actually navigate around that organization to steal the seed server, which generated the second factor so that the attacker could then target Lockheed Martin um, with a brute force attack already knowing the second factor. And then they went on to steal, uh, um, allegedly steal um, uh, uh, blueprints for a significant uh, military infrastructure. So, so the, 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 that, the reason that that breach is so significant is first of all, it demonstrated the incredible sophistication of the threat actor and the challenge that all organizations are facing. But secondarily, it was the catalyst for an incredible piece of work by Lockheed Martin, where they published um, the analysis of the attack and the different steps along the life cycle of the attack. And they coined and trademarked the uh, term, the cyber kill chain. And that concept of the cyber kill chain has become such a, an important concept in our industry and has uh, produced ultimately things like the MITRE ATT&CK framework, the MITRE DEFEND framework, and, other, uh, and, and other, other concepts in and around how to address the challenge of these multi-vector attacks and, uh, uh, and the sophistication that we're facing. So for me, that, that was such an incredible um, uh, attack and an incredible piece of work that Lockheed Martin did to educate the industry following that. Very well explained, yeah. Darren. Uh, so, uh, and then, uh, many companies are heavily investing in cyber security now, but still breaches are happening. So where do you think is the gap between uh, technology and actual security? Yeah, so again, good question. So probably the biggest example, uh, uh, again, was when, or surprise, was when JPMC, who were spending you know, 500 million a year on, on cyber security, you know, are the victim of, a, 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 of an attack. and and. Um, so many organizations out there not spending 500 million a year uh, are thinking, well, crikey, if these guys are, are still victims, how, how, what chance do we have? And, and I think um, from my perspective, the, the, the answer comes in the emerging discipline of offensive security. And this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and uh, indeed at Fortra, we're in a very privileged position because we have both defensive and offensive tools that we service the market with. And really um, a great many of the world's elite red teamers are utilizing our tools uh, from, a, from an acquisition that we made called Outflank. And um, in doing so, um, are helping organizations challenge their environment by having an ethical hack activity. Um, uh, and so uh, if you look at the, the, the career trajectory of um, uh, the offensive security side, you've got um, you know, the vulnerability piece to start with, that's really important. Then you've got the penetration testing piece, sophisticated use cases on penetration testing with command and control, and then ultimately red teaming where you pivot and you progress through the life cycle of an attack and you get to the capture the flag. So leveraging that red team activity and the reason why that red team activity is becoming a critical component to be compliant with many of the regulatory frameworks 
is because the learnings from that red team, <laughs> delivering those learnings to the blue team, the defending team, is really where I see that gap. So you can buy all the best uh, tools in the world, but when until you challenge yourself with a with a um, uh, an ethical hacker with the ability to get to the crown jewels to do the capture the flag exercise, you'll never really know whether you're ready, whether you have the right sophistication, indeed where your gaps are. Yeah, and so I think the emerging discipline of red teaming and the and the tooling in that space is a really really important exercise. And if you don't have the resources to have your own in-house red team, commission a third party to do it because they you will learn more in that exercise than than any vendor will be able to tell you in terms of in terms of my tool does this or uh, better than something else. It's the operational excellence that you need in that time. I completely yeah. agree with you. Uh, so, uh, Darren, with your uh, partnership with uh, Cyber Knight in the region, have you observed any mindset or any uh, regional practices that have surprised you? And how is Fortra uh, 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 tailoring solutions uh, to these regional nuances? So, so uh, great question. And, and um, it is a great privilege to be partnering with Cyber Knight. Uh, we really enjoy that. And they've hosted us on their, their stand here at the uh, Ditex event. Um, in terms of in terms of what surprises me, I think it's the maturity and the level of innovation that we experience with our clients in GCC region. Um, there is there is a great emphasis on cybersecurity. There's uh, there's a lot of government uh, encouragement and regulatory frameworks to drive uh, the the increased posture related to cybersecurity. And I think that in many cases, GCC are way ahead of Western Europe and, 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 and so on in terms of in terms of driving that adoption and recognition of how critically important it is, not just from an individual organization, but the overall posture of a kingdom or the GCC region in, in its entirety. So I think the level of innovation, the level of um, sophistication is is it, you know, it is, it is surprising, world leading in this, in this theater. Very interesting and very informative. Thank you so much for joining us today, Darren. It yeah. was great talking. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching.